this is Joe at Sierra Specialty Automotive. Welcome back to the shop. This will be the, the second and I hope the last uh, video in uh, again what I hope is a two-part series on my cheap eBay die grinder. Uh, first video showed me making a new arbor for a diamond uh, dressing wheel. Uh, that arbor worked out fine, but it turned out the collet was way undersized for the bore of the spindle. Uh, so I'm going to uh, continue to try to salvage this almost worthless machine by making a new collet that should fit better and should result in much less run out. So let's get the camera focused down on the roll around cart where I've got these pieces and uh, talk about how we're going to get started. I mentioned at the end of the last video that I was going to check the run out on the original man, uh, arbor uh, that came with the diamond wheel uh, to see if it was uh, better or worse than the one I made. Uh, I feel pretty good. Mine, uh, the, the one I made to six millimeter has well under half a thousandth, uh, more like a couple of tenths of run out. Uh, this one from Harbor Freight uh, has about two thousandths run out. So let's toss that one in the bin. I'm going to use my six millimeter mandrel or arbor and I'll make the collet to match. Uh, this is the nut, the collet nut that uh, has about a half inch clearance in there uh, inside the threads. The, this mandrel measures just a hair under 7 sixteenths OD at the largest part. Let me get a close-up on that. Don't know whether I'm going up or down. There's the the collet nut with a, about, about a half inch clearance inside. Here's the collet with a large OD, major OD of, uh, of 420 or something in that neighborhood. Uh, so I'm going to use 7 sixteenths. I'm, I'm back, to, uh, back to my oil hardening drill rod. This is 7 sixteenths 01 uh, drill rod. Uh, should work uh, just fine. And we'll be doing all of the turning in one operation. I'm going to machine the outside features first, and then I'm going to drill and bore uh, the ID. Uh, then we'll part it off, take it to the milling machine, and do the slitting with the slitting saw. Let's go to the lathe and get set up there. I want to start by trying to identify the angle on this collet. Let's see if I can get that a little closer. Uh, this is a single, single taper collet. It's around in the neighborhood of 12 degrees. I want to put it in the chuck and run a dial indicator over it. I've got a B drill bit, which is just a hair more than six millimeter. I'm going to put that in to keep it from crushing. Run that all the way through. Now I can put that in the chuck and come up lightly on it and not crush the collet and push it out of shape. I should be able to get a so so uh, reading uh, with the dial indicator on this taper. There's about a quarter of an inch there and I can go back and forth. It's very irregular, uh, very rough machining, so it's not going to be a smooth indication, but I should be able to get an indication. I'm 
going to bring the carriage in, uh, the cross slide, into a, some kind of a reading and go back and forth. I'm at the end of my travel there, okay? I got to I got to get myself some travel back. Now let's bring it in. I'm at the just about the crest of the taper. Get that zeroed up. Now she goes back and forth up and down, but it's about zero at each end. So that's about as good a compromise as I'm going to get. Uh, just not going to get any better uh, reading off of that with that rough, uh, uh, rough machining on that taper. I'll see if I can't do a little better on mine. Let's get the indicator out of the way. Bring some drill rod in here. And we'll need a little bit to cut off, part off, and that ought to be enough. Concentricity is not going to be terribly significant for this part of the job, but I should, I should try to get it uh, fairly good. It's good practice anyway. I've got a Noga on order. Sterret tools are nice, but these uh, indicators are uh, th these uh, indicators are a, uh, kind of a pain to set up. All right, we're quite a ways out. Let's let's see if we can't do better than that. I should bring you in a little bit, see if I can get a focus on that indicator while I'm doing this. I think you can see well enough to tell it's going back and forth. should be bringing it fairly close. Uh, considering that's going to be a non-critical diameter, I'll settle for that. I think first order of business, I'm going to put a center drill in there. In case I want to hang on to it with the live center while I'm tape uh, machining this taper. Back off just a wee bit. Getting a reasonably consistent uh, 331 thousandths, uh, something like that, using the brown and sharp intramic in the bore of that spindle. 
Uh, so we're going to use that for a target, uh, 330. Uh, we're starting at uh, 437 and a half. So we can begin by working down, uh, oh, right out a hundred thousandths of an inch. So we'll do a little bit of cutting. I'm, I suspect this is going to chatter here when I uh, start, so I may want to bring a live center in here pretty quickly. <laughs> should have it fairly well roughed in. I've reset the DRO to zero. And we are at uh, 339, excuse me, 334. So there's about four thousands left to come off. Uh, when we come back after this cools down, we'll start using the compound to get the taper uh, and then follow through with the cross slide. Uh, for the moment, we'll shut down and wait for the temperature to drop. Well, I'm really glad I let this cool down uh, before I took any more off because we're within filing and polishing range on the main diameter here. Uh, we're at about 331 and a half and we're looking for a 330. So I'm just going to back off uh, and start working the the uh, compound to to get the taper. I'm going to back this up just a little bit. <laughs> look three thirty three thirty dead on and the taper looks fairly good it's not perfect the taper look a lot better. <coughs> now it's about time to drill this thing. Already have it center drilled. An A drill bit that is just a wee bit smaller than six millimeter. So I'm going to start with an A and we'll see how it looks. I would like to be able to read this to six millimeter after drilling, but I do not have a six millimeter reamer. Smallest I have is eight. We'll see what happens there.
even with the cutting oil, we got quite a bit of heat into that part. So it's time to let that cool down a bit and uh, then see what will fit in it. So we'll shut down for a moment and come back. Let the part cool down fairly well. Now I'm going to put one more bit of polish on it. That's got the OD done. Now it's time to take this out and put it in the super spacer. Uh, I could have used a collet block for this, would have worked easily enough, but I've got this spacer on the mill already for another job, so I'm just going to put it in there and use it. And I want to fill this bore up, I think, with something that I can clamp on. I'm not. Uh, I'm a little nervous about the, the wall being thin enough to cause chatter and maybe even hanging up uh, with the slitting saw. So I think I'm going to make a plug, an aluminum plug, to fit in there uh, that I can clamp lightly in place and then come in from the side with the slitting saw and have that aluminum backing up the cut. Uh, if nothing else, it'll make it easier to deburr uh, because the, the 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 burr going into the aluminum will be almost insignificant. Whereas if I uh, slice right into the uh, open diameter, the open bore, uh, it'll carry a burr in there that might be more difficult to get out. So I'm going to pull this material out. And put in a little bit of aluminum dowel here. This is 3 8 Don't need any particular amount of it. Take what shows up there. 3 8 and we're looking for uh, looking for 236. Seven. I'm looking for 237, 20 more to come out. Uh, I was watching an old Keith, Keith, uh, Keith Fenner video the other day and I noted that his uh, take on dial calipers is about the same as mine. I consider them a disposable item. Uh, I do have uh, a Starrett uh, 6 inch dial caliper. I've got uh, a nice Mita Toyu uh, 200 thousandths per rev uh, 6 inch dial caliper uh, but for the most part I use these cheap ones. Uh, this is one thing Harbor Freight has that uh, serves me well. I buy these two or three at a time uh, and when they break I don't worry about it. I just grab another one out of the box. This one's got a broken lens. Uh, hasn't affected the operation of it and I use these only to get into the ballpark. When I start getting close to a finished diameter I move over to a micrometer and get a real measurement and this again shows that I'm uh, a bit over 255 and I'm looking for uh, uh, 237 so I'm going to take another 15 off of here and check again. Uh, I'll take 15 and a, a spring pass or two.
just saw me back that up with my thumb a little bit, trying to take some of the flex out. 239, 239 and a half, 237 and a tenth or so. I'm going to try that. Tiny bit of filing. I'm about a couple of tenths strong on the OD uh, out here at the end yet. to the end of my pellet stock. Oh, I'm going to have to file that just a little bit more. It'll start, but it doesn't want to keep going. again. Aha! That's what we're looking for. Okay, let's perk this off. Well, here we are at the milling machine for my first ever effort at cutting with a slitting saw. I've got a fairly slow speed set on this, around 250 right now, but I think I may see how it sounds when I turn it on. I may turn it down a bit less, and I'll be feeding by hand. I think for the first cut here, I do not need to put my plug in. Uh, I think the rest of the structure of this will support it solidly enough. Uh, we'll find out pretty soon. Let's, let's see what happens. to work fairly well. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and try again. going to back off now and come at this straight from the end to get the depth of cut 
uh, to match the original collet. Well, I have to say, I'm uh, very pleased with the way that came out. Uh, I will have uh, burrs in there, but I have a quarter inch uh, ball hone that I can uh, run in there and uh, clean those burrs out after I get this parted off. So this thing is almost finished. Before we go to the grinder, I wanted to show you this. I have dialed up the arbor again in the chuck, in the uh, set true chuck with the four-way back plate. The back end of the arbor is turning within a couple of tenths. And when I turn the chuck, I get this. I probably should have checked for this earlier. I've got a good three thousandths of an inch run out, maybe even four thousandths of an inch. Yep, four thousandths in the wheel itself. Uh, that I'll, I'll uh, I don't see any way to correct for that. That that is uh, an error uh, manufactured into the wheel. So I'm stuck with that. Now let's go to the grinder and see what it looks like there. All right, here we are mounted up at the grinder. Let's see if I can get my finger in here and turn this without pulling it too far out. I have uh, apparently got this in here just right. Uh, my accumulated thousandth of an inch of error is offsetting one of the four thousandths error in the wheel itself. So now I'm turning uh, three thousandths out of uh, out of square, and I'm going to settle for that for the purpose uh, of, of this tool uh, for what I'm going to do with it uh, I'm not completely satisfied but I'm uh, uh, happy enough with it that I'm going to uh, let that go we're going to we're going to use it as it is it's going to work fine it's going to do its job uh, uh, completely uh, adequately I had hoped for slightly better results from this project, but all, all things considered, uh, uh, mainly the, the main thing to consider being the fact that the wheel itself is uh, running out of parallel. Uh, I, I think it came out pretty well. The collet is about as true as it could be. It certainly is a whole lot better uh, than the one that came in the machine. Uh, in uh, every respect so I'm happy enough with what I did in this project and I'm gonna call it a qualified success uh, time to quit wasting time on this uh, cheap eBay die grinder and move on to uh, much more important things which would be almost anything else so That'll do for this video and this project and this series. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you'll comment. I really hope you'll subscribe. And I really hope you'll come back and visit the shop again. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.